Hello and welcome to another update video about Bitcoin. Yeah, it did go up yesterday. We did hold support all the time, as I did explain in previous videos, as long as we're holding critical support in these impulses, there is no reason to assume this, the trend has stopped. And I would even expect it to go up further at the moment, as long as the support level holds. The support level is still the one, the same one that I mentioned in yesterday's video. Um, late yesterday's video, which is here between 18,828 and 20,143. Now, to be honest, I don't know if if um, if that was only on Telegram and Discord because I did update it. It might be that in my last video we weren't that high, but um, we have now reached the $21,300 level. Basically, we broke yesterday with Bitcoin above the 200-day moving average. That's the first one since December 21 that we have been above that level or that we are above that level. We have nearly broken the wave too high. So I may have to readjust the wave count here anyway, because wave four is getting really long. Wave four is getting longer than wave two, which um, one of the viewers made me aware yesterday. And that's actually true. So it can't be that diagonal anymore. However, this doesn't mean that the bear scenario is completely invalidated. It just needs a readjustment of the wave count. So I just want to make you aware again that in the last few months, there have been so many false starts and it's just still time to be a bit cautious, right? We still don't have five waves up, which means there is no evidence for a trend reversal as per Elliott wave. However, of course, we can use, we can see a break of the trend line of the descending wedge. We can see a break of the 200 week, 200 day moving average. We can see a bullish crossover on the two week MACD, something I made you aware of a couple of weeks ago that this is coming, which, and I have mentioned, it's an extremely bullish signal, but of course it's only an indicator. It indicates it's not absolute proof. Only price action will be proof and evidence. But um, yeah, you know, there were, there were um, signs and hints that things could be changing and that we're very close to an absolute low. But again, we don't have five waves up yet, and I need to see those five waves up to confirm that the bear market low is in. So at the moment, the preferred option is still to see one more low. And I said it yesterday on Telegram and Discord that I am usually quite cautious has allowed me to survive the crypto market because um, there have been many calls about recently about um, upcoming pumps. And I mean, we expected upside as well. But a lot of people always say there is an upcoming pump. So they're catching the falling knife all the time. And we need to be aware that we had many false pumps in the last few months, right? So um, I want to see evidence. We want to be objective on this channel. So I'm waiting for evidence. I told you yesterday what I need to see for evidence. But until then, of course, those lower time frame impulses can be traded as well. So it is still going up as anticipated, but obviously a bit stronger than initially anticipated. I think that's good to... Good to um, Good to summarize. It was a crazy day yesterday. So um, just want to show you again this two week MACD that we talked about. Um, here we had a bullish crossover the last. Well, this was April 2019. After that, the bull run started and then we had another bullish crossover after the uh, March 2020 low. So after strong corrections, a bullish crossover on the two week MACD has historically always led to significant increases. Here we had one as well. This one was a fake out. Yeah. Um, but it is different because this was not really sort of a bear market-ish correction. Um, so this was a bit of a fake out that we had here that was in September 21. So again, it's only an indicator that indicates it's not right 100% of the time. But after a bear market, when we had a cross, then it always worked out. So that's just interesting. Um, yeah, as I said before, um, and also in December, we talked about price increases here in this C wave to the upside. I don't need to change the overall count. Yeah, This is still an absolute correct wave count and the count hasn't changed. This ABC correction here or this ABC move to the upside hasn't changed for weeks and weeks and weeks. What is changing is the height and the size of the wave three because we see extensions here. We have brutal, really brutal extensions here currently. Those brutal extensions have taken the wave three, I think now to um, two, 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 the five, nearly the six point, well, probably the 600% extension. Let me just activate that here on, um, 
on the Fibix. Yeah, perfectly the 600% extension. Um, normally for a Wave 3, you would expect at least, and they are always minimum targets, the 1.618 extension. Of course, this moved up higher. I mean, reasonably, you can expect maybe the 3.618. When we see higher extensions, it's, it obviously means it's more bullish. And a 600% extension, I haven't seen in this bear market yet. So it's extremely interesting. But you get these extensions. Yeah, we had such an extension on the way down here as well. So don't get me wrong, this is not unusual. Um, but this was probably not that much of an extension as, as this one is. But um, you get these extensions when something is either very bullish or very bearish. Which doesn't mean the bear market has to be over. It's just a bit of a, I guess, a retail rally. Again, I said that yesterday. It might be driven by retail. I need to double check that. Um, because uh, institutions in terms of accumulating have done their best to keep the price low over the bear market. Also, what I need to say, and this is um, this is so important, what I need to say, I have posted it many, many times on Telegram and Discord for channel members over the recent months that the number of available Bitcoin BTC on exchanges is getting lower and lower. And I think it was on a, I can't remember, like a three-year, four-year low, or if not, nearly all time low um, so available BTC on exchanges goes down and down and down now that has to do with the fact that people want to hodl that nobody wanted to sell their BTC at the low prices anymore but it also has to do with the fact that people don't trust the exchanges anymore all of that adds to a view that and I did mention it as well that should we get a rally this can be a substantial rally don't forget about that yeah I make these posts on telegram and discord the people can form their own picture, but if you have less and less BTC available on exchanges and then suddenly demand goes up, which it so far didn't, but it seems to be doing now, then you suddenly get those, I don't want to say short squeeze, but you get those, um, you well, a squeeze basically because people want to get it. There is not enough available on exchanges. And if a lot, enough people at a similar time want to get BTC and there isn't enough, it will drive the price up quite quickly because demand is going lower, right? available available sorry supply is getting lower available supply on exchanges so very important but yeah no no change to the count um we still have a um three wave move up i want to see at least five waves here so i would say at least one five a four five is coming um again i just have to say this does not it's not enough evidence yet that the bear market low is in to see a bear market low and to confirm that as per elliott wave what do we need to see and again, I will probably change the count um, ahead of the next video, but this is irrelevant at the moment. Um, what is important here, I mean the higher level count, what is important is what we need to see is here a wave one, a wave two, a wave three. This is the higher level pattern, what we need to see. Four and five. If we see five waves like that, because at the moment we only have three, A, B, C, yeah, we need to see the five. So after that small 4.5 that we're going to talk about in a minute, I need to see another 4.5 of the higher degree pattern. That means we have on a higher level time frame a um, five wave pattern which indicates the bear market low was already in and then ABC down and this will be a next entry point. And that ABC down can take us maybe down to 19, 18K again. Um, if it goes well, yeah, it doesn't need to go that low, but um, that would be a great accumulation point. And these are sort of the confirmation levels that we need to confirm as per Elliott wave that a trend has shifted. So we need to see five waves up. We need to see three waves down. Again, at the moment, we haven't even got the first step complete yet. We only have three waves up. We need to see five and three waves down. And then this is an awesome entry point. Anybody who wants to can, of course, trade this wave as well. Yeah, the pullback and then trade this, this one could also go short. Um, and then the next confirmation level is that you break the high of this, um, well, yeah, of this wave one, you could say, right? Now, if you want to wait for this confirmation level, this is up to you, right? This might be around 23, 24K, maybe even 25. I normally don't wait for that. I am waiting for five up, three down, because that is a pullback trade. Waiting for this to be broken as well would be a breakout trade. Um, the problem I have with breakout trades is always that the risk level is much higher because you're trading far away from support and pullback um, target zones. But here you can see very nicely how Elliott Wave and uh, traditional patterns go together. We've got here a head and shoulders, right? An inverse head and shoulders. Okay, so that's what I want to see to confirm the bear market low is in at the moment. I can't yet, but of course, signs are getting a bit more promising. I don't want to ignore that. 
and until we see that larger pattern we can follow the smaller degree wave count and the smaller degree impulses make assumptions and um, if the pattern breaks down then it's a sign that it's not going to hold at the moment we've got the three waves up um, everybody sees and chases green candles um, but n nobody sees the structure anymore the structure is the same the structure is just what abc oh sorry one two three to the upside here currently in this c wave to the upside um, which again is, is part of the larger three wave pattern. It might be that we're finally seeing this fourth wave. Um, let's see if we get there, yeah. This fourth wave support needs to be held now to enable Bitcoin to move higher in this fifth wave. I would now assume we are seeing the fourth wave. Um, if we don't even reach 20,139, we still don't have a healthy fourth wave and I would assume we are still in the third wave, okay? So hope that's clear then we have another extension the way we're coming down now i would see it's likely that we're getting this fourth wave now um, but we haven't touched the support level yet this support is sitting between 18,820 and 20,140 so between the 50 percent retracement of the third wave and the 23.6 usually this is now obviously quite a large support area the most likely area to get into would be this one in very likely cases or most frequently, a wave 4 reaches the 38.2% FIP level. The 23.6 is rather rare, but we've seen Solana, for example, reach only the 23.6. So I want to make people aware that there's this large area that can be scaled in, of course, uh, if you are interested. And um, as long as the 18,824 level is holding, we should get this fifth wave here to the upside. And that shows very nicely that the higher those extensions are, then the stronger such a wave 3 is the stronger the pullback is allowed to be as well. But um, in FIP terms, it's the same. So yeah, this is sort of what I would be looking at now. Um, this view is valid as long as we don't take out the recent high. If we take out 21.3K, then we're obviously still pushing higher and we haven't finished the third wave yet, but obviously we're massively overboard. Now being overboard doesn't mean the trend is over, but it means that we need to be watching for a trend reversal, at least short term. If this is a fourth wave, I can imagine it would take quite long to play out because um, we are so overheated in the market so it would take time to bring the indicators down now saying that on the four hour chart we have quite a strong rejection already close to the support area um, so it needs to be observed right there is no guarantee we get into this now but it looks like quite an impulsive move to the downside now could be an abc just a suggestion now not confirmed yet but it could be that this becomes an a wave we will get quite a high B wave and then the C wave down. Now saying that a lot of these ABCs have failed on the way down here and we moved up um, a bit earlier. So this one, for example, I think didn't get into the support area, which means this wave three was never finished. However, here we had it, here we had it, and here we had it. You know, those were all tradable support areas. So, um, and all would have gone really well. You know, and if it goes up earlier than anticipated, we're just waiting for that wave four still. We just have to be a bit more patient. Um, but that's where we are, right? And it's up to you if you trade the pullback or the breakout. Um, but um, that's a valid view, you know. The breakout above the wave 5 high, of course, would lead to further increases. And the pullback into the support area would most likely confirm that the wave 4 has, um, is ongoing and that we should see a reversal before we break 18,820 for a wave 5. Bear in mind, at the moment, I'm skeptical about this move up, yeah? Um, I need to see five waves to believe it. And um, until then, I'm following the pattern, I'm watching it, it is tradable, and I'm giving you the key support areas. Okay, so that's my view about Bitcoin. I hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you really like the content, then please check out the channel membership. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.